Make sure you guys video guys the thumbs up button. Who most of y'all already know about this situation. I made a video about this a while ago. But I'm I'm doing this video today is to let young brothers know that listen, you're at a higher risk than older brothers, elder brothers. You're at a very high you're at a higher risk because a lot of them a lot of you young brothers really don't understand what's going on with Keisha. <laughs> You probably just got in the dating game, dating market. You have no idea who they are. So you're at a higher risk. Older brothers been through it. Mm -hmm. So they, they already checked out. They realize who they are. But it's their job to tell you. It right. is their civic duty to tell you. Shout out to the older brothers letting the younger generation know about how Keisha get down. And if something i'm talking to you younger brothers if something was to happen to you fatally if something happens to you keisha who is partly the reason when it comes to your situation right her cooperation with these pookies mm -hmm. she will not expect to have to deal with any of the actions she she don't want to be held accountable and let me let's just play the video let's just play this video we'll have a kendra cook Next, we head to the S. James Foxman Justice. This is Kyandria Cook. Oh, Kyandria Cook. Center in Daytona Beach, Florida. Time she got. I just want to say Her boyfriend and his friends plan to do this, but you didn't. You, you didn't carried out. This happening. You didn't. You didn't believe this was. Your boyfriend and his friends were planning to do some some harm to this dude. You got on a dating app, lured this dude, and you didn't think that something like this could happen. <laughs> That's crazy. Then she's gonna say she didn't even know what was going on, even even though the boyfriend. And her friend, the Pookies, let her know what was going to happen. Now you don't know what was you don't know what was going on. <laughs> and here's the sick thing about this. How did you mean? And here's the sick thing: she went to court, expecting, expecting to get probation. Mm. She went to court expecting to get probation. How much time she got? Let's go, man. I didn't even know what's going on. I'm tired. It's crazy. Woo! She got 20 years. What are you crying? Sentence you to 20 years in state prison. Wow. Dang. And the mother's crying. 20 years. I wonder, did the mother cry like that for the young for the young man that got shot? Did she cry like that for Damn, him? she got 20 years. That's did crazy. Did she cry like that? That's insane. No. No, they don't oh, care. Snap. No. Damn. 20 years. Mm, mm, mm. The boy, the boy wait, didn't even die. But still, still. Uh, wait, wait, wait till you, wait, wait till you. That's a mama flip. That's a mama. She's like a hood chick herself. Look at her. 20 years. Woo. And she young too. What, 19 years old? 
turns out that Cook and her mother's reactions were so intense because they believed the plea deal meant no prison time. The marksman allows her to enter a ten minutes later, citing miscommunication between Cook and the assistant public defender. As a result of that new deal, Cook sentence is reduced to eleven years in prison. Oh, 11 years. Now, now, how Florida one. She's in Florida. Yeah, that's Black Florida. man. This is what I mean. This, this is uh, accountable. Uh, accountable. Uh, I can't even say it. Accountable commentary. Support this channel and uh, go hit the thumbs up button, guys. Let's continue on. So they they they, they reduce her thing from twenty to eleven years. Well, I guess the boy didn't pass away that she set up, but still, he could have had if he if he would have passed. She would twenty years would have been sufficient. I think I don't know. This is what I mean about this system. Even even when they're wrong, they still still. Still, black men still get a slap on the wrist. And y'all probably think 11 years is a slap on the wrist. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> She'll be out I want eight. you to think about this. She got sentenced to 20 years. She'll be out in eight, though. Ten months later, she's back in court and they cut it in half. Where do you see things like that happen when these young black males do the same thing? Oh, no. We don't get that kind of treatment. 20 years, you get 20 when years. When do you see that? When these young black males do the same thing. This is insane. This is insane. These young black males, if they commit the same crime, they get sentenced... Let's say he gets sentenced to 20 years. It's a, it's unheard of for them to be able to come back in 10 months and get a different sentence. It get cut in half. Yeah, that rarely happens with us. So this would happen. Two other, you know, two lawyers came in pro bono. Pro bono. Two, two other lawyers came in pro bono to take on her case, right? To save Keisha. Right? Huh. They came in pro bono. Right? P put in a couple of motions. And in 10 months she was back in court. And it got cut down to 11 years. This happened in, in 2018. Oh wow. This happened in 2018. She's probably out now. She's probably out right now. Oh, yeah. That was 7 years ago. On good behavior. Mm-hmm. She's probably out right now. Send somebody else up. <laughs> she, She's probably out right now. On parole. Mm -hmm. This is seven years ago. I think I remember this. 18, let me see. How long? This is sick. This is sick. 18, so this happened in 2000. She got sent in 2018. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 24. Yeah, she's probably getting ready to get out. She, if she, you know, good, good behavior. She may have to do maybe one more year. I think it's eight years, I think, when you got a 10 year sentence to be able to get out early. So she may get out next year. Sick. This is sick. They, they cared more about her than the victim who got shot. Shot. Who got set up. <laughs> they cared more about her than the victim that got shot. <laughs> you yeah. lured somebody. Right. He you could die. Want somebody to get harmed. Mm -hmm. You went on a date in that. Lord somebody to get robbed and shot and, and, and they, they they decided to give you 20 years. Okay, you get 20 years. That's it. 10 months later. 10 months later. No money. These cases got no money. Ten months later. Do you know if it was a young black male, in order for him to do something like this, he would have to have paid lawyers. It would have cost him a grip to get this yeah. type of outcome. Right. It would have cost him a grip. I believe him. It's nasty work, man. Nasty work. 
what's, what's even nasty is that she expected probation. <laughs> she would think she would get no time. She expected probation. Probation. And listen here, young young black man out there. Break it down. They, you're an enemy to them. You mm -hmm. just don't look at them like that. Right. You don't look at them like that. They look at you as an enemy. Their mothers, their aunts, grandmothers, sisters, mm. all are saying negative things about black men. And then when they get older, the first thing they look at is, is you as a problem. They look at you as a problem. Mm. They look at you as an enemy. They look at you as somebody not to care about. They look right. at you as somebody they can abuse, somebody they can lie to, lie on. They look at you as somebody who doesn't deserve respect, mm -hmm. loyalty, admiration. You don't get any of that. You're the one who don't understand this, young black man. You don't get it. I'm letting you know, you don't get it. You're right. I have to give it, I have to give it to him. You're right. You coming in a relationship with them with your heart on the sleeve. Mm -hmm. They, they send coming your in a relationship with a dagger behind their back. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're not understanding what I've been saying to y'all for the past couple of years and you still dealing with them, whatever happens to you is on you. How you over here? How you listen to me? How you listen to me? How you listen to me for years telling you stay away from these keys? How you listen to me for <laughs> years and then still go out there and deal with them and then when you end up in a situation Right. The difference is you had this information. You had. You're in this space. That's the difference between you and those other black males who don't have no understanding of what's going on because they're not fortunate enough to be in this space. You're actually in this space. Right. You're actually here. You're actually in this space. You know what's going on. And you still decide to deal with them. So whatever happens to you, it's on you. It is. It's on you. It's not on nobody else. It's mm -hmm. on you. You know what's happening out there. And you still decide to be with them. You still decided to get in a relationship with them. You still decided to roll the dice. Even though the dice game is rigged. Those are rigged dice. Right. Cold black males go through it. I'm tired of seeing young black males. Young black males men, young black men, I'm tired of seeing them, I'm tired of seeing them go through it, I'm tired of seeing them not understand the trap, I'm tired of seeing them get hurt, and you know who usually get hurt, I say this all the time, you know who usually get hurt, it's the, it's the young working black men that get hurt, mm -hmm. yeah. it's the young working black men, It is always the young working black men, the young black men that are working in school that get set up by these keishas for these pookies to harm them. Mm -hmm. Happens I'm every day. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm really sick of it. Happens every day. That was from um. This. That oh why shit. Are oh, more oh, hold on a second. Let me go back. Who was that? That was uh. Damn. This this is for young. This is from um, accountability commentary. Check out his YouTube channel. I like he's speaking some game. I've always talked to talked to brothers about that too, young brother. I tell them be careful dating. You know, I love my sisters, but I tell my young brothers, especially young brothers who who don't really have like that hood demeanor. Like he was saying, the hard work and go to school, trying to make some make a son make some of himself. Never been to jail, stay out of trouble. You know, just want to have fun, meet girls. I understand that. But you are a target to these young girls. 
when you are like that, when you're not a game banger, when you're not a dope dealer, when you're not, your pants ain't all the way off, off your ass, you ain't tatted up from head to toe, you are a lick for these sisters nowadays. You can't be the nice guy to these women no more. Women say, oh, I want me a nice, good man. Nice man, nice guy, a good guy, a good man, that's, that's AKA to a black woman in America, a sucker. They're looking for a sucker. They they only gonna be loyal to the hoodlums, and they're gonna be they gonna do whatever the hoodlums say. They are gonna set you up. I had a situation. I I, I I I told this about my other even my old. You know, you look at me. I ain't no thug. I ain't no street kid. You can tell. I had I was raised right. I know I, my mom and daddy. I know both my mom and dad. My mom and dad got divorced when I was eleven, but my dad lived right up right up the street. Um. I almost got set up. And this is I'm I'm in my forties. But they scope out. He looked like he might be a lame. They look at good guys as you a lame. You a lick for Tyrone and them. Oh, that he look like he don't get no ass. I'm going to try to set this nigga for, you know, for Pookie and them. For rape. You know what I'm saying? I was I was at this bar. It's called, uh, this is on Crenshaw called uh, The District. And it's kind of like a little hood. It used to be something else. I forgot before they changed it. But it's, it's, it's The District. It's a little hangout. And it was my birthday. And I went there to have dinner one time. Because I was meeting with my friend in Hollywood just to hang out for a little bit. I didn't really do much for my birthday. But anyway, make a long story short. I went got dressed up when they had me a little you know, salmon dinner at the, at the place. I wanted to support a black, a black business on my birthday. You know, the, the District is black owned. So it's right in L.A. on Crenshaw. So I went there, had me, a, you know, my birthday phone on a Saturday when they had me a nice dinner, listened to some music. And I'm at the bar and this girl comes up to me. She's about maybe 25 years old. She's like, why are you here by yourself? She's talking to me. Yeah, da, da. But, you know, we, we should hang out. Let's go. And she just tried to get me to go to this. She said, yeah, me and my friends about to go to this this hookah bar, this hookah lounge in Compton. You know, she's like, "What you? Why don't you go with us?" I'm like, "No, I'm not. Well, I'm, no, I got plans already. With my friends. You know, I'm not going with y'all." I just, but she thought that I'm just gonna be so in awe of this young girl hitting on me. But I'm just going, oh, "Yeah, let me go with y'all." You know, and these are straight hood. It was it was three of them. The one that was talking to me, she walked. I was at the bar. And her friends were sitting back at at a booth, and they was body. I looked over, and they was hood chicks too. And even the girl that was talking to me, she was cute, but you could tell she was hood. She was a hood chick. And um, she said, yeah, why don't you come? You know, I said, oh, I'm meeting with my homeboys now. So she said, oh, they can come too. Y'all can go. She just kept trying to get me to go to Compton, some hookah bar. I'm like, well, I'm, I don't, like, I don't even know you. I don't, you know, I'm not finna go to you, you know, hookah bar in Compton. All these hookah bars got one downtown. Why this particular one in Compton? I'm thinking to myself, this probably some little game banging, game banger on who, jinky hookah bar. That if I go there with her, with these hood chicks, her, uh, her hood homegirls, they're going to probably rob my ass. If not rob my ass, get me up in there, drug me with a drink, and then go in my wallet and take all my money out of my damn account. And then have me butt naked outside in the alley somewhere when I wake up the next day. That was a setup. You tw this, this, and she's about maybe 24 years old. Yeah, we can go out and na 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 and hang out and I can you can I can meet, I can meet your friend. She said, I'm like, no. I said, we are, I said, why don't y'all go? With? She didn't want to go with us to Hollywood. She said, no, we got plans and da, da, da. But I figured we, it's, it's going to be turned up there. It's going to be lit. I'm 40, so I don't give a fuck about, uh, I want to go somewhere that's laid back, chill. When I was young, when I was her age, I wanted to be, oh, yeah, the lit place where everybody at. Yeah, that's where I want to be at. I mean, that's, that's when you're young. You want to you be with the in crowd. I'm like, no, lady, I'm, I want to go somewhere chill, if anything. Listen to some music, have a cigar, have some cognac, have some labs, talk, a laid back spot. You know what I'm saying? I'm older cat. I'm a sophisticated man. I'm a classic man. You know what I'm saying? Like the song. And I'm like, this, and I thought to myself, at first my ego got in the way. I'm like, look at me. I still got it going on. You know what I'm saying? A nigga, I had my beard trimmed up, you know, fresh ball cut, had a nice little outfit on, fresh iron and stuff. I thought, okay, I'm looking so good. These young girls getting at me. Then I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. When does young when, when do a young girl ever approach a 40-something-year-old man? Then I reviewed the conversation where I had with her. I said, that young girl is trying to set me up. She was trying to set me up. And she gave me her number. I didn't call it for like three or four days, but I ended up calling it. And it, it, it was like some, it was straight to voicemail. Didn't say her name. Who, who knows what number that was? But of course, she never called me back. I was like, she was trying to set me up. She was trying to set me up. Some little for some for some little hood gangbangers in Compton. 
Cause she just come to Compton, this hookah lounge. And like, if I would have went with those girls to Compton, they would have they would have drugged me at that bar. That's probably owned by a bunch of their little gang banging friends, Pookies and Ray Rays, and they would have robbed me, or either they would have had me carjacked or something. You know what I'm saying? Cause they'll you know, and they'll rob you for anything. I here in L.A. You could be you know, I was driving a Camry, 2019 Camry. So they like, you know, they can use that to go. Do drive-bys or robberies. It's gonna the, the, the tags gonna come back to my name. So it's like they could have robbed me for that and went to go do a mission in it in the car. Who knows? All I know is I said no. I'm good, young lady. I'm cool. I'm not going with you to Compton. I'm not going with you to such and such. But she just kept trying to, you know. And then I'm thinking at one point she wanted to go with us. I'm like, even if she would have went with me and, and, and my friends. And her little her little game banging homeboys. Who's to say she don't be in the back seat texting? Oh, we over here on such and such. These niggas got a lot of money. Come come rob these niggas. You know we over, we over on Hollywood Boulevard and Wilcox. Da, 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 da. And then some dudes she send the she, she send the you know the squad after me. You know what I'm saying? Young guys and then the women are a lot more scandalous in their twenties than they were when I was in my twenties. You young guys, man, got to be careful. If you have a good demeanor, you raise right, you are a lick for these young girls, these black girls. They will set your ass up in some stuff with these with these hood dudes. I'm telling you, black women in America have an obsession. They have it's almost like they be in the trance. You know, I've seen chicks before growing up. You, I've seen chicks. You couldn't tell them to do nothing. Nothing. Hey, dude, can you? Nah, I ain't doing nothing. They couldn't do. Wouldn't do nothing for nobody. A hood dude would come around him. Hand me that. Okay. Bro, what happened to you? You was this chick that you don't do nothing nobody tell you. This little gang they gonna get out of prison. He tell you to move that. You all jumping all you over yourself. Dad. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like they have him in the trance or something. And like Homeboy was saying, they don't respect good men. You a lick. You a sucker to them. That's why women always say, I want me a good man. I want a good man. What they saying, especially American black women, they saying, I want me a sucker. I want a sucker. I need me a sucker. So I can set him up for the nigga I'm, I'm banging. Which is some dude that just, just, just got to doing 10 years in prison. Back and forth. I'm going to set him up. That's why I want me a good dude. I remember one time. It was some years back. The rapper. Y'all can look this up. The rapper Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. He met these girls at a club. Y'all probably heard this story. He met these girls at a club. In um, in Burbank, in California, he was out here from Cleveland. You know, he they, they bomb thugs is from Cleveland. He was out here from for um, from Cleveland to do uh, to do some you know some record business stuff. He had an album coming out. You know, doing press and stuff like that. Plus, he had just did um, that particular night. It was on a Saturday night. That particular day, he ended up going in the studio and laying down a verse for some rapper. And got paid for it, whatever. And I think he said he had like seven, ten grand on him. He had, you know, he just had it in his pocket. And um, I think they ended up getting the ten grand from him too. But anyway, let me tell you what happened. He ended up checking into the hotel at the Hilton, Hilton in Burbank. You know, it was called the Universal Hilton. It's over by Universal Studios in L.A. And um, he ended up going to this little spot called a Saddle Ranch, which is at Universal City Walk. So we ended up meeting these two girls. They're, oh, you busy bone from Bone Thugs and Homie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we, so these two girls wanted to go back to Busy Bone's hotel. So Busy Bone thinking, oh, shit. And these were young girls, too. They weren't young. Like, they were over like they were over 21 years old. They were, you know, they were, they were younger than him. At the time this happened, I think he was in his early 30s, maybe mid-30s. And these girls were maybe 21, 22 years old. So they wanted to go back to Busy Bone's hotel. So he thinking, oh, shit, hell, yeah. Both of y'all? I'm about to knock both of y'all off. That's what he thought was getting ready to happen. These chicks went back to his hotel. And he said he should have known something was up. Because the girl that I was talking to, me and her was talking. But her, her homegirl was quiet. And she was texting the whole time. Not really paying attention. She was giving uh, her little, they, they little game bang boy. I think they were Bloods or something or Crips. I think they might have been Crips. She was, gave, she was giving they game banging homeboys boyfriends their location what hotel he was at and everything they get back to busy bones room right busy bone talked about this on one of the radio shows he said they you know drinking smoking whatever and um he said he had jury i think he had, he had like twenty thousand dollars of the jury on whatever 
and he said he noticed he said he was high he was kind of drunk so he was talking to the one girl he was talking to he said now that he looked back at it that girl was trying to distract him the home girl kept acting like she was going back and she was like all right i gotta go to the bathroom i gotta go to the bathroom he said he even told the girl that he was talking to damn your home girl go to the bathroom a lot right make a long story short what she was doing is while, when she was acting like she was going to the bathroom, she went and unlocked the door to the hotel and cracked the door so the niggas can come in. They got surveillance video of the dude. It's like five dudes walking down the hall towards his hotel room, right? Maybe 10 minutes later, you see the girls leaving on the security camera walking down the hall. Then a couple of them, I said maybe then followed by them leaving, you see the dudes, the five gangbanger dudes leaving. And, and, and they got a bag. They had them took busy. Then maybe 30 minutes later, you see Busy Bone beat up, pants falling off, his face is all bloody. He's staggering down the hall trying to make it down to the lobby. And he passes, he kind of passes out to the side and falls on the ground. Some people that was living, that was on the floor, I think, I don't know whether it was hotel security or people, you see them kind of come to his aid. They set him up to be robbed. The, the girl cracked the door. The dudes came in, beat him down. Took the, I think he had ten thousand. Took the ten thousand cash he had on him, plus the twenty five to thirty thousand dollars jewelry he had on him. Kind of find they end up catching these dudes because they asses went went and flashed the shit online. Of course, dumb hood niggas flashed the shit online. The police put two two together, found out where he was at, took him to jail. I think all the people that I think out of the five of them, I think two of them got um, got sentenced. Two or three of them got sentenced to like thirteen years in prison for that. But that's what I'm saying. Set up, they setting brothers up. It was a brother got set up, I think, the other day. A chick set him up on a day nap. You have to be careful. Do it dealing with these these women nowadays are scandalous. They wonder why marriage is declining. They wonder why David's bridal, you know, the 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 uh, the, um, the bridal store chain. They wonder why they're going out of business. Because dudes ain't marrying these women no more, man. They see the scandalousness in them. And all the older dudes are telling them, hey, dude, don't, like, old boy was telling them, leave these women alone. They're not like they used to be. All that, all the days of the, you know, the falling in love and having a good woman by your side, them days is gone, baby. Unless you're a gangbanger or you just got out of prison, you know, or you just, or you run from the police. Them, those only want to get their loyalty from sisters in America. But you got to be careful, baby. You have to be careful. I be telling you, brothers, if it's too good to be true, stop thinking with your small head, think with your big head. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. That's what I thought to myself when that young girl was hollering at me. I'm like, she's trying to get me. Why is she trying to get me to go to this Compton hookah bar? She's a cop. Let's go to Compton. I'm like, no, I'm not going with you to Compton, lady. I don't give a fuck how fine you are. I don't give a fuck how big your ass is. But she thought that was going to be, I'm going to tap this little young girl. No, girl, I know. I know. Y'all don't never step to me. Now, all of a sudden, I'm that nigga. Although I was looking good. I already know what the deal is. You're trying to set me up. You're trying to set me up, sister. Come on now. Anyway, be careful out there, young brothers, who got something going for yourself. Get yourself together. Make you Be aware. Be alert. Don't be inviting these chicks to your crib. Don't let them see you. Hey, can, we, can I see your phone for a second? I, I saw a brother got finessed like that. Um... This young brother, who is a security guard, he used to re do security at Telepictures. Young cat, he probably in his thirties now. But I mean, at the time, he's in his early twenties. And this girl, uh, this is when Cash Out first came out. This girl started working for the company, and she wanted to borrow his phone. She said, "I can't find my phone. Borrow your phone." She borrowed his phone, got got in Cash App, and sent herself two thousand dollars through his Cash App. And then she quit the next day. He didn't catch on to, wait a minute. He went and checked his bank account and saw where she cashed. And then, and then the cash app she sent it to, it wasn't her cash app. It was some dude in Inglewood, some low, low jack. It was some hood cat that had um, that she sent the money to. See what I'm saying? Y'all can't tell me, y'all young brothers, y'all can't be messing around, man. Leave these broads alone, man. I know it's hard. That booty be soft, yeah, it be poking out. So this be looking good. But if you ain't no game banger, you ain't no criminal, she might be trying to set you up. Just letting you know that right now. You know, guys, what do you guys think about this video? 
I'm losing my voice. Leave your comments, subscribe to Charles and Ezra. Appreciate it.